In part three, John puts on the eye implant and has several flashbacks of his past life. Some of them include his mother while one shows the incident where the previous director of New London, Ed, was accidentally pushed to death from a cliff. Watson, who is by his side, also sees all the memories flashing right before his eyes. She is taken aback when she finds out that Ed was killed by none other than the savage, John himself. However, when she tries to interrogate him, he gets off his chair and walks out of the place. Following this, John walks through the busy city with his new implants on. He is able to see a detailed world where all the statistics about everyone is given. But being a newcomer, he is easily disoriented. On the other hand, all the residents of New London find out that the savage has finally put on the eye implant and get excited. Even Bernard is happy that his friend has finally embraced the city's culture. In the next scene, Bernard visits John's place, where he is approached by the personal assistant, Gary. The latter is a Gamma Minus citizen, and he is not allowed to have many opinions and thoughts. But being John's close friend and confidant, he doesn't want to reveal much either. Bernard, who obviously knows that John has been having intercourse with Lenina, inquires about it. Gary doesn't want to answer, but when Bernard threatens to recondition, wipe out all his memories, he reveals everything. He says that John and Lenina have intercourse every day for about two hours, and this has been going on since weeks. Saying this much, a scared Gary leaves the place. A while later, John arrives at the room, looking for his assistant, but he finds Bernard instead. At this time, he has already removed his eye implant. Bernard asks him to take a seat and reveals that he took his dating advice. John inquires about the lucky girl, and Bernard replies that she was Lenina. In fact, he is doing all this to make John jealous. He also continues that he enjoyed every bit of the date, where they had a wonderful time. After Bernard leaves, John is clearly distraught and angry. Shortly after, John leaves his room and roams around the park, where several Epsilons are cleaning. He sits on a bench, and just then, the curious Epsilon, C Jack 60, approaches him and asks about freedom. John is in no mood to answer, but C Jack 60 seems to have become very used to the idea. He starts ranting about how the Epsilons have always been suppressed and bullied by the Alphas and the other higher castes. In reply, John tells him to fight for his rights and freedom. As the two are talking, a bunch of Alphas and Betas stare at them from a bridge. Seeing this, John suggests everyone stare back causing a tense moment between the two parties. After learning of this, a fed-up Bernard approaches the new director of New London, Henry, and tells him that the savage, John, has started crossing all the limits. He is a virus which is quickly spreading across the city, and if an antidote isn't made, there will be trouble. However, Henry, who is calm and empathetic, doesn't want to take any actions yet. Elsewhere, Lenin's best friend, Franny, forces her to come with her to a party and enjoy the night. Franny is worried that her friend has been depressed as of late and wants to lighten up her mood. Soon, the two go to an erotic party where a lot of people have gathered. Lenina, who is clearly still thinking of John, doesn't want to do anything, but Franny makes her swallow a very potent Selma pill, which makes her forget everything. Soon, the two start dancing their hearts out. Unfortunately, at the same time, John puts on his eye chip and sees that Lenina is about to get intimate with another man. Because of this, he becomes devastated. In the meantime, Bernard goes to his close friend, Watson, to discuss how to exile John. Surprisingly, she has become depressed and changed her funky appearance after learning of John's truth. She knows that the savage was responsible for Ed's death, but she tries to hide it. However, Bernard can clearly see through her eyes. Just then, he notices an optical chip in her hands and demands to get it. When Watson refuses, he fights with her and throws her to the ground. Then, he puts on the chip and gets to know that the savage has started wreaking havoc on the society of New London. Bernard is shocked to know that Ed was killed by him. Wasting no time, Bernard heads to Director Henry's office and reveals everything. The latter is shocked and angry that John has started disrupting their society. However, he doesn't want to tarnish his reputation by punishing the most popular guy in town. Hence, he assigns Bernard with the task of exiling John. In the next scene, Bernard broadcasts the memories of John in the city, resulting in everyone knowing that he killed the previous director, Ed. They also get to know that the savage has been having intercourse with one of their own, Lenina. As a result, Franny approaches her and asks her to leave the savage. However, Lenina explains that she doesn't like being ordered by others before leaving. Elsewhere, John realizes that he has been exposed and starts wandering around the city. He almost reaches the metro tunnel, but just then, Bernard arrives with an army of Epsilons to arrest him. However, when the Alpha Plus orders the Epsilons to apprehend the criminal, they refuse. Instead, they escort him out of the place safely. This shows that C Jack 60 and the other Epsilons have become tired of living a disgusting life, where they are ruled and tortured by the Alphas and Betas. After a while, as the new director, Henry, is wandering around the local park, 
He sees some leaves lying on the ground. Enraged, he orders some epsilons to clean it up. But instead, they kill him, implying that the revolution has begun. Later, Mustafa Mend and Bernard catch up in an emergency meeting and discuss the death of Henry. Bernard assumes that it was just another accident that has been happening as of later. He thinks so because Epsilons are regarded as completely harmless and opinionless. However, Mustafa Mend knows that the truth is very different. She then ends the meeting, but not before appointing Bernard as the new director of New London. Meanwhile, Lenina has returned to work, where everyone has started despising her. One of her colleagues berates her for turning against Franny for the savage. Here, we also get to know that Franny has decided to get reconditioned, as she doesn't want to keep living with the guilt of losing her best friend. After the recondition, she will be a completely different person, with very little remorse and guilt. As Lenina and her colleague are arguing, Bernard suddenly calls her via the eye chip but she completely ignores him. When he keeps calling, she angrily takes out the Indra chip and breaks it. After a while, Bernard eventually runs into her and reveals that Henry has died. He also mentions that John is a barbaric savage who has already started changing the lives of people for the worse here. However, Lenina, who is still in love with John, ignores everything and leaves. Elsewhere, at the Epsilon's department, a depressed John talks about how his love, Lenina, has betrayed him for several men. But despite this, he wants to go up and find her so that they can eventually leave New London and settle in a faraway land where rules don't exist. However, as he is about to leave, C Jack 60 stops him, claiming that he has become a criminal in this city and that if he ventures out, he will be apprehended instantly. Hence, C Jack 60 and the other Epsilons volunteer to go upstairs and retrieve Lenina for him. At the same time, Lenina is approached by a now modified and cruel Franny who zaps her using a taser and takes her away. Simultaneously, the new director of New London is briefing the top Alpha Pluses and other leaders of the place to be vigilant and combat against the burning problem in the city, the Savage John. He wants everyone to find every corner of the city until they can find him. But unfortunately, before the search can begin, the evil Epsilons reach the underground room where the Soma pills are manufactured and destroy all the machinery. As a result, people are deprived of the addictive pills, which soon causes chaos in the city. People start going crazy after being deprived of their favorite pill, and many of them even fight for the last ones that are remaining. In short, the city of New London is slowly turning into savage lands, where everyone is driven by greed, hunger and power. Taking advantage of the unrest, the Epsilons arrive upstairs and start looking for Lenina. John is also there, but when an Alpha tries to stop him, the Epsilons kill him. Soon, the army of Epsilons start wreaking havoc across the city, using their sharp tools and equipment. They kill all the high-ranking officials that come in their way. John begs them to stop, but C-Jack 60 and the others don't listen. For them, freedom means the destruction of other people. After a while, C-Jack 60 approaches Bernard in his office and tries to kill him. But before he can do so, the director reminds him about humanity and cooperation. He mentions that freedom is not about killing others, but it's having rights, where one can choose to do whatever he or she wants. Hearing this, C Jack 60 has a sudden change of mind and leaves the place without harming Bernard. Elsewhere, taking advantage of the chaos, Lenina escapes from Franny's grasp and runs away. Just then, a group of Epsilons approach her, presumably to kill her, but they simply walk away. It turns out that the Epsilons are killing their targets using their eye chip. But since Lenina has already removed hers, she cannot be tracked and hence is safe. By this point, C Jack 60 has also realized his mistake and wants his friends to stop killing others, but they don't listen to him. Just then, Mustafa Mind arrives at the war zone and notices C Jack 60 sitting alone, devastated. She talks to him briefly and asks him to follow her as she wants to show something. In the next scene, Bernard comes across John and berates him for being a monster. He mentions that the city of New London never had any violence or fights before he arrived, but now it has turned into a literal war zone. He also calls John by other names like Maniac and Psycho. John, who knows that it's his mistake, doesn't say a word and simply listens to it. Just then, Lenina also arrives there and angrily tells John that he has ruined everything. He has turned the Epsilons into crazy people who are not hell-bent on destroying the city. John tries to explain that he didn't mean it, but Lenina is having none of it. In the meantime, Mustafa Min takes C Jack 60 to a mysterious room and reveals that New London was designed by her and six other people who wanted a society where there was no violence, discrimination, or hate. 
They are the real Indras who constantly monitor the whole city and make sure that there is no problem. However, with the arrival of the Savage, everything changed. Now, she wants to shut down the whole project so that the remaining people in New London can be saved from the Epsilon monster. If she pulls the plug on the project, all the Indra chips will stop functioning, and hence, the Epsilons will stop killing. But for that, they will have to kill all the six people who are connected to the Indra. Mustafaman takes down the six other people, while Sejak 60 kills the seventh one, who is revealed to be none other than his past self, who is an intelligent being. And as soon as he does so, the Epsilons in New London lose their memory and stop killing the innocent people. But there are also consequences. The barrier which was separating the savages from the people of New London has been turned off. Now, anyone can enter the place without any problems. In the next scene, Bernard wakes up near the same cliff where Ed died previously. He finds a golden box nearby, which has something special in it. Soon, he is joined by Watson, and the two decide to leave New London once and for all. They eventually reach Savage Lands, where the leader of the cult group, Sheila, prepares to kill them. However, before she can do so, Bernard shows the mystery golden box, and she allows the two to get in her car. In the final scene, we see that John has started living in the farms of New London, where he can grow crops, catch fish, and do whatever he wants. We also get to know that the city has been completely evacuated, as there is no law and order there anymore. The once sprawling city has now been overrun by dense vegetation. The series ends as John has his dinner alone in his new home, while Lenina stares at him from far away. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.